morning. We thank the band for that march before our meeting. And as you know, we're celebrating our core anniversary this weekend. And that's 141 years of Salvation Army ministry in this area. And that's wonderful, isn't it? Uh, it's good to see you all here. It's good to see Christina with us. And uh, hope you enjoy the service. And uh, probably a special mention for Ben. Uh, ben and Tori are getting married on, uh, my memory serves me right, the 23rd of August. 17th. <laughs> Don't get there on the 23rd, that'll be the answer. 17th of August, but uh, Ben and Tori are off next weekend uh, for a tour of Europe, uh, ending up in Croatia, where they will be getting married. And so uh, perhaps a round of applause and uh, all the best to, to Ben and Tori. After our service today, uh, the uh, group of the band will be at Chillingham House for our monthly ministry there. And uh, during the week on, uh, on Monday morning is the cafe, but just a, a note that there will be no cameo club tomorrow afternoon as it is the funeral of Florence Nesworthy. So please uh, take note of that. Uh, on Thursday, the parent and toddlers is also different for the last parent and toddlers of this year. There will be a picnic in Thompson Park at 10 o'clock. Uh, we're looking forward to that. And then uh, just a mention uh, for the Strawberry Fair on Thursday. But first of all, just a thank you for all those that have uh, worked so hard in the, uh, in the time up till now. Uh, on Friday we had our messy church and probably for the first time since before the pandemic it felt a sense of getting back to normal. We had families from pre that that came uh, we had uh, uh, children from the parent and toddlers. We had a lady and a daughter from the Ukrainian group. And it was a really lovely evening on, uh, on Friday evening. And then last night, what a wonderful uh, time we had. And we thank those that uh, prepared the music and the food for that. Uh, but to see over 90 people in this building sharing, a lot of people that don't regularly worship with us, it was a, just a fantastic evening. And it was so great to be a part of that. And we finished that little session of, uh, of activities with our strawberry fair this coming Thursday. That's seven o'clock. Uh, and it will be a great time uh, before, perhaps some of us go off for summer breaks, just to finally uh, uh, enter into some fellowship together and to celebrate what has been a fantastic week of our core anniversary. So uh, we look forward to that on Thursday. And just a couple of administrative items. The, uh, you'll see on the newsletter, uh, the big collection is upon us, a chance to, uh, to raise money for the Salvation Army. And there are two days, uh, dates at Morrison's. If you can see Major David, if you're able to help for an hour, it just eases the burden if there are multiple people able to collect. And also, if you haven't seen it in the newsletter, there are a few copies of the Core Mission Council minutes at the back of the hall, also on the notice board, if you'd like to read them. May the Lord bless you. Good morning. How are you feeling this morning? Was any of you lying in bed last night thinking, thank you for the music? <laughs> Was it? It's one of those songs that once it gets in your head, it's there and it's going to be there for a while. It was a good night last night, wasn't it? It was a lovely night and just relaxed, singing, or trying to sing in my case, playing in the band, but enjoying some food and fellowship afterwards. So thank you for those involved in that. 141 years. What a different world it was in 1882. The height of the British Empire, where Britain literally ruled the waves. A quarter of the world <coughs> turned to Britain as the center of the universe as it was. And William Booth sent a guy called Jack to Sunderland to start the Salvation Army. And you guys are the result. 141 years later on. William Booth had a wonderful way of just giving somebody a fiver and directions and saying, get on with it. Nowadays, we have planning meetings about planning meetings about planning meetings. And got to dot all the I's, cross all the T's, and then think about it. He just said, there's a fiver, go to Sunderland and start. 
and it worked. It worked in lots of cases. So we'll be looking at that and sharing about that a little bit later on. My theme for today is, is a little bit inspired from the whole thing from last night, but sing a new song. So we're continuing to sing, and we're going to be singing a new song and looking into that, uh, Psalm 96, a little bit later. 676 now, some book says, sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Florence is there in heaven, rejoicing, giving thanks for God in her life. And we'll be remembering that as we engage and share the service with the church on Monday. So let's stand. We'll sing. We'll take, sing the song straight through and we'll follow the lead from the band. Let's stand and sing, friends. <laughs> Please, please take your seats. I wonder, when we get to heaven, when we reach those pearly gates, what's St. Peter going to say to us? He's going to say, morning, afternoon, welcome in. You led a good life. You did this, you did that. Or is he going to say, wow, you had an amazing life. The amount of people who have come into heaven have said, oh, by the way, Fred sent me. Bill showed me the way. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus. That's the first thing we're going to see when the... First thing after we close our eyes on earth for the last time, the first thing we'll see is Jesus. Isn't that amazing? What is your image? What in, in your own head, what is your image of God? 
When you pray, do you have an image that you're praying to? Do you have the old man with long hair sitting on a cloud? Do you have the, the picture of Jesus that was in every church? The blue-eyed, white-skinned, blonde, blonde hair? What do you pray? What image is there in your own mind when you pray? When you go and you pray and you whisper a prayer in the morning? When you pray and you realize that prayer changes things. When you realize that God answers prayer. Prayer is the most amazing tool that we have. It's a two-way thing. We pray to God and God speaks to us. But prayer works. Do you believe me? It does. Really, prayer works. I can name you people who are terminally ill and are still here today. I can name you people who were deaf and now can hear, who had cancer and now are cancer free, because prayer works. Major Elizabeth reminded us all a few weeks ago about Dunfermline, her mom, one of the, the stark memories that her mom has is the, the town drunk coming and kneeling at the mercy seat and getting up sober. Prayer works. Sometimes we just don't do it enough. I remember when we, we were in Jersey, uh, Angus, a good Scotsman, said to me, the churches were never as full as the word you in the wall. And being a serviceman myself, an ex-serviceman I should say, is that when you're in a war zone, your prayer life improves dramatically. But we don't need to pray out of a desperation. We just need to pray as a relationship builds, that we whisper a prayer in the morning, and then we thank God that prayer changes things in the morning. Let's just sing that chorus through, shall we? And then perhaps somebody will be willing just to lead us in prayer to the Lord Almighty this morning. Thank you. shall we? And there's somebody willing to lead us in our prayers.
thing. You're going to be blessed as we listen to the youngsters and almost including in that the married man uh, as the, uh, the, the youth band brings to us their ministry to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. That uh, leads wonderfully into what I'm going to say next. Sunday School March, as it was, Onward Christian Soldiers, the composer for the third verse, originally said this, Like a mighty army moves the church of God. Brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod. Though we are divided, all one body we, one in hope, in doctrine, one in charity. But those in wisdom changed it, though, says we are not divided but originally that was though we are divided mentioning about the different denominations the different <laughs> facets of the church who do things slightly different but still worship the same god though we are divided all one body we i wonder do we still do things today that we've always done what do you think yes exactly the same way okay Audrey, could you play the next clip? I, I don't think we can listen. At Brixton Market, they're used to the Salvation Army, but not this way. No tambourines, no trombones. The joy strings in their hit parade number, it's an open secret.
you've changed slightly. Just slightly. 1964. Was anyone around in 19, anyone old enough to be around in 64? Yeah. yeah. Anyone remember those type of uniforms? Yeah, I vaguely can remember some of the older folk in the core in Darlington wearing. <laughs> but we started off open air ministry. The Fry brothers said we can play some instruments. So instruments attracted a crowd. It drowned out some of the, the shouts of abuse and telling people to be quiet. And then it's developed to the joy strings in 64 to develop to what we do now, constantly changing, constantly developing. The band this afternoon will be going to Chillingham House. Last week we were at Tesco's. Sometimes we will go and we'll play outside people's homes. And when we went to see um, well, a couple of people, just masses of crowds gather around. The feet are tapping, it's, it's different. It's the same message but singing a new song for each generation, learning how to do it differently. When I was at Sunday school a few years ago, the, fame, the, the ultimate song was Father Abraham. I don't know if you ever had it up here. Yeah, remember? Father Abraham had many sons, many sons of Father Abraham. I am one of them and so are you, so let's all praise the Lord. It was right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg. Yeah, and we used to do everything. It used to drive the Sunday school teachers absolutely bonkers but it was the song for them. Now we're going to sing a song that some of you were really engaged in on Friday. And it, it's probably a song for this generation. And the next generation will be something totally different. The way it's going to be, the world is going to see a little bit of heaven in my life. Now, if you'd have seen some of our more stately members of our call, I'm looking over here at Joan, engaging in singing that song it was it's amazing because it's all about jesus the truth is that god loves us so much that he sent jesus to die for us the way we do it is different the way we worship the way we praise is different we don't sing latin anymore do we women or ladies are not silent in church and sitting behind husbands we don't do that anymore do we no one no one is saying a word at the moment because they say, I dare not answer that one. But we change, we develop, we learn a new song, the new way of, of doing things. And we've got to constantly keep evolving and doing that. So I invite you to stand. We're going to follow the, the screen and sing the way it's going to be. If you know the actions, please do them. If you don't, just enjoy the song. i 
exercise doesn't tell us anywhere in the Bible we have to be miserable and just see, seeing so many faces just full and happy it's wonderful we're going to be blessed now as we listen to the message from the senior band thank you
Thank you very much to the band for that beautiful message. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take myself and I will be ever only all. Not just a little tiny bit and not just on a Sunday, but all for thee. So thank you for that reminder this morning. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Psalm 96. Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They will sing before the Lord for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his truth. May the Lord have blessed to the reading of his word this morning. Just now we're going to listen to the message from the songsters, please.
Thank you very much, the songsters, for your message for this morning. And it was great looking around and seeing some of the, the congregation joining in very quietly where there were uh, former choir members itching with anticipation to join the choir again in Christmas. But thank you. Singing in that heavenly choir, learning that new song that it mentions. I wonder what Jack would have made of it all. In the third year of this movement called the Salvation Army, 1882, being told to come to Sunderland, probably thinking, where on earth is Sunderland? I've never heard of the place. In 1882, for those purists amongst you who know that the Salvation Army existed before 1882, it was a Christ East London Christian Revival Society, then the Christian Mission, but in 1878 became the Salvation Army called to come to Sunderland. Jack stepped out in faith. The Salvation Army was literally changing the world and the status quo was never going to be the same. Three years earlier in Darlington, Rosie and Annie, two young ladies, arrived and started the Salvation Army in Darlington. But their work influenced a man called W.T. Stead. Why is that important? He was the editor of the Northern Echo later went to London to become the editor of the Pall Mall Gazette. Later became very good friends with Bramwell Booth. And the whole maiden tribute of modern Babylon was published. And it was a scandal that rocked Victorian society. It's where Bramwell and Stead, together, purchased a 13-year-old girl who their mother had sold into sexual slavery. The mother was so disappointed, upset that they were the Salvation Army and they brought this all to the limelight that she complained to the police and Stead actually was arrested and spent time in prison. This is what the Salvation Army was doing then. Getting involved, making a name for itself, getting into trouble, all ends of trouble, but making a difference in society. So much so that they transformed Victorian society. What would have happened if Jack, when Booth had said to him, you're going to Sunderland, he says, oh, can't do that. They speak funny up there. Can't do that. It's, it rains all the time in Sunderland, what it feels like at the moment. What if he said no? What if all Rosie and Annie, who went to Darlington to start the Salvation Army, which influenced Stead, which led the whole series of events, had said no? What have they said? We're happy serving God where we are, doing what we do. We don't want to take this big step, as has been reminded in the, uh, earlier today the, from the Bible study, about stepping out of the boat. We don't want to do that. We're happy, we're comfortable where we are. What would have happened? What would have happened if William Booth had said, well, I'd be quite happy and content being a Methodist minister. Quite happy and content going around doing the status quo. What would happen if he said, I'm not going to bother writing this book in darkest England, The Way Out, where 180,000 copies were sold in a few months, which fueled the Salvation Army, highlighted some of the stuff they were doing, and an illustration of this was in 1888, the Salvation Army within a year supplied three and a half million meals. Three and a half million meals in 1888. Food ministry was critical in the army. Booth said, soap soup of salvation, why would someone be interested in Jesus if he's hungry? Why would somebody be interested in Jesus if he's dirty? And the army has kept that theology going, meeting the physical needs in order to meet the spiritual needs. Jesus often taught over food. Some of his best teaching was over food. You know, we, was it last week, the week before, the feeding of the 5,000? His best teaching was over food. The Salvation Army pioneered this ramshackle bunch of Jesus lunatics, for want of a better word, pioneered food banks before food banks happened. First food and shelter depot, 18th of February, 1882. 600 quid it cost to build. 
pioneered food banks before they were popular, hostels before we had hostels, job centres before the, co the country decided to have job centres, help people to emigrate to find work in a better place in a different country before it was popular. The army made a huge difference to the point they changed society and the laws of society for the better. However, my heart, my heart breaks every time I go home to Darlington and I go past the old hall, remembering back it being packed, remembering back the saints who were there. No doubt you'll feel the same when you look around at empty seats and remember, oh, I remember so-and-so, I remember so-and-so. It, my heart breaks when I receive a notification that another core is closing, like it did in this past week, that Thornaby Core is closing. And I wonder what those pioneering saints would be thinking today. I wonder what they would say. What would Jack say today? What would the pioneers of Thornaby say today? Can I? Dare I be bold enough to suggest an answer? that we, as a Sarishan army, need to sing a new song. We're told in scripture in the Bible reading that we shared that we need to sing a new song. Remember the point, it doesn't say tuneful, and I'm happy it never says tuneful, but we're to sing a new song. And I'm holding on to that. That we do things differently. We have to do all things differently. But we need to constantly look at what we're doing asking why we're doing it. Can it be better? It was wonderful on Friday night at the Messy Church um, to see one of the Ukrainian ladies there with her daughter. It was wonderful last night to really see people just relaxed and enjoying music, worship and food. This afternoon we'll be there with the Ukrainians and Perhaps a new way of outreach, instead of going out of the building, is to go downstairs when the Ukraine is there and just spend the afternoon with them enjoying tea, coffee and learning your best at trying not to make them laugh too much when you try to speak a few words in Ukrainian. We have that great commission from Jesus, don't we? To go and make disciples. A disciple is someone who teaches but also a disciple is someone who is taught. And we've got that commission to go out. And sometimes going out will mean coming in and looking at what happens within this building and stepping out of our comfort zones and being engaged in it. Maybe it's coming to toddlers on a Thursday morning, just chatting to the parents. Maybe it's going to the coffee morning or the, or the cafe and just chatting to folk. Maybe it's on Sunday afternoon. Maybe it's with the band this afternoon going to Chillingham House, just going chatting to some of the residents there. But today, we do things differently. We don't sing in Latin. As I said, we don't say to the ladies, you can't speak in church. I don't think we'd be dare say that. We do things differently from previous generations. Our uniform is different from previous generations, thankfully. But one thing that has never changed is that knowledge of Jesus Christ. That saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That no matter what happens in your life, that you could step forward and come to here and give your life to God. And your life will be totally different. We need to cry out like Jabez did in 1 Chronicles 4.10. Oh Lord, that you will bless me and enlarge my territory, not give me military victory, but a greater influence that we can sing a new song. If you look at the original Hebrew, the context of the psalm, we had to proclaim the good news that is spelt out over that our God reigns, that Yahweh's kingship over the world is what is new and continues to be new. The psalmist knew that. He was trying to encourage and set in writing words that would encourage over the generations and thinking about what the Jews were going to under, undergo 
the persecution throughout the history, the persecution of the Second World War, and yet that psalm is telling about God's greatness, about how God is to be loved and worshipped and proclaimed. Today, sadly, we live in a country of idol worshippers more than ever. If you want to look at the TV, you have American Idol, Britain's Got Talent, and a raft of other talentless shows that you may watch or may not watch. The world wants us to worship the idols of consumerism, of work, of status, of sport, of alcohol, of drugs, of sex, of, of music, of social media, and all the manners of things that wants to come between us and our relationship with God. But God, Yahweh, reigns above all these. And we're to say to the nations, to our families, to our neighbours, that the Lord reigns. When I look at the world that we live in, the, the crisis of people and stability, I'm sure that God weeps. When he looks at the shocking waste of life because of conflict and war, I'm sure God weeps. When we look at once flourishing churches closed or are closing, I'm sure God weeps. Yet he still holds out that one day we will get it right. If you were at the messy church, you had the prodigal son, the story. And the, the key point of the prodigal son is that he came to his senses. Sometimes the church needs to come to our senses and get it right and go back to God unconditionally. Then we can serve this current generation and help to transform this current generation to what it should be rather than what it is. For me today and for us, looking back is not looking back with rose tinted glasses at what was. Remembering the good old days, the days of our youth when we were packed, there were thousands of us in church, the band was a hundred strong, the songs were two hundred. It's not looking back with rose tinted glasses. It's remembering that our God is. Our God, Yahweh, Jehovah, reigns above the whole earth, over nations, over us. And we're to sing about it, tell about it, tell the experience that we have of God. Tell them in the east and in the west, as Gowan Song would tell us. Tell our families, our friends, our neighbours, our work colleagues. What is our singing like? Are we good singers? Are we good singers? I'm not talking about physical singing. I'm talking about singing out the truth of the gospel. As the psalm tells us to sing that new song, to do it in a new way, a but keeping the same truth, singing over and over and over. So what is our singing like? Rosie and Annie were singers. Jack was a singer. Never heard any of them. Never met any of them. But we feel and we experience their influence today here in Sunderland. We feel and we experience the echoes of the song that they shared because they were willing to be stand up and be counted. The early pioneers of this corner, no doubt you can be sitting there and thinking back 30, 40, maybe it's more years of those saints who were in this call. They were singers. Some of them would have been pioneering stuff like the Joy Strings did, which was different for that age and would have met opposition at that time. You've been blessed here with really good singers in the past. Dean messaged me um, during the week to say that two of those getting commissioned this weekend, actually getting commissioned now, came here with soldiers of this call. That you collectively as a church would have helped them learn a new song. So, what is your singing like? What's your singing like today? Shall we find out? Shall we sing? We have a gospel that matches the hour. We're going to sing, we'll sing it through twice, just the chorus through twice, and then we'll continue. Thank you.
is a weakling, nor purpose, nor soul, till he discovers that God is his goal. Sing a new song, praise his name, declare his glory. Great is the Lord, ascribe to the Lord, worship the Lord, say amongst the nations, in Monkwemouth, in Southwick, in Roca, Seaburn, in all of Sunderland and beyond, that the Lord reigns. I hope that we all sing about this transformational message. Let us sing that people, that they're loved, that they're needed, and they're prayed for. One of the most wonderful pieces of scripture is where Jesus says, my prayer is not for them alone. This is including the disciples who are there, who have heard the message of Jesus, but I pray for them, for those who will believe in me through their message. So Jesus is praying for you. Jesus, 2,000 years ago, prayed for you. That is awesome. That you believed in him through the message passed in all tradition, through the message passed in the scriptures, that you believed in Jesus. So Jesus prayed for you. Jesus prayed to his Father for you that the message of the church, of the church tradition will be passed on and passed on. And that is a responsibility that we have to pass that message on to the next generation as we learn to sing that new song. Jesus prayed for you to believe in his message. That you may have heard when you were small or when you were older in life. That our God reigns. I'd like you just to reflect on that as we listen to a beautiful song sung by the Portsmouth Songsters that simply says, somebody prayed for me. And as the songsters sing, that somebody is Jesus. That Jesus prayed for you. Thank you.
Swami. Father God, we thank you that you sent your son Jesus to this world. Not just to take the, the weight of this world's sin upon himself. But also, Father God, that he inspired so many to write things down. That we have scriptures, that we have the Bible, that tells of his, his journey, his teaching. But that wonderful passage of scripture where Jesus tells us that he's praying for those who believe in God through the message that is passed down that Jesus is prayed for us that no matter what we're facing in life difficulties and challenges concerns and worries that your son Jesus <coughs> prayed for us for the strength to cope the ability to know what is right and what is wrong and Lord we thank you for that we also thank you for the pioneers of the church those pioneers who stepped out in faith and were obedient to you and helped to build your church, to pioneer new areas and opportunities of your church in order to reach people, to tell them that you love them. Father God, help us to, to learn that new song for this generation. Help us to step out of our comfort zones and to do different things or perhaps new things differently. Help us to be your salvation army doing what you want us to do, where you want us to do it. Lord, equip us for the task. Give us the strength and the resources to do your work here in this great city of Sunland. And Father, for the next 141 years, may your will in this church, this Salvation Army Corps, this city, this Salvation Army in this country and in this world, may your will be always done. This we ask in faith through your dear son's name. Amen and amen. Friends, in conclusion, we're going to sing that wonderful song, Lord, for the years. Your love has kept and guided. Urged us and inspired us, cheered us on our way, sought us and saved us, pardoned and provided. Lord of the years, we bring our thanks today. We're going to sing all the five verses through, so let's stand and sing, shall we, friends?
final benediction, friends. This, this is the God we adore, faithful and unchangeable friend, whose love is as great as his power knows neither measure nor end. Tis Jesus the first and the last, whose spirit shall guide us safe for. We'll praise him for all that is past and trust him for all that's to come. And we unite to say, Amen. Thank you.